guys, it's me, Aridos12, and today we are going to be working on something special. Hold on, let me find out where it's at. Don't need the demo. I think it's in server maybe. No, that's the wrong one. Sorry. I thought it was that one. I think it's this one. Nope, it's not that one either. It's got to be something. Hold on, guys. I'll find it. I'll find it. There it is. I think that's what it is. Uh, let me just check real quick and uh, make sure. So I'm going to go to... I think it's this one. Yeah, it is. Okay, so. For those of you who are regular, or maybe even irregular, to the stream... Last time, we, sorry about that, but last time I was streaming, which was yesterday, I was working on localizing the menu and also worked a little bit on the packages aspect of the menu, or in this case, create a class. So the next thing I'm going to work on is, actually, before we work on anything, I'm going to show you something that I did with the SPAS-12. So if you don't know what the SPAS-12 is, it's actually a shotgun. And in this case, it has a folding stock. Let me grab some water real quick. And that folding stock, I actually managed to get it to work. And also, I mentioned last time that I was going to add an explosive for the packages thing, but didn't get to do that. So I might try to do it next time. I know, I keep putting this off, but, you know. It was really hard to work on the SPAS-12 and that in the same time frame. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to show you what I've done. So if you go to primary, in fact, let me just do this. If you go to primary, and then right-click select on SPAS-12, which should be select item, I don't know what happened. I'll probably fix that today. And then let's see if we can turn it around so you can see it stop. There we go. Add a camo. Click this. Go to attachments and add an EOTech. The stock folds out. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> the stock actually folds out instead of staying in the same place. Because you got to remember, the stock has a special site in which is not only the main site or iron site, but it's also part of the stock. So it can be folded out so that you can see this. Now, if you guys want to, I can fix this so that we can, you know, be able to, like, work with it and stuff. But I'm actually going to get back to localization before we do that. So let me just uh, announce the stream again so that people can see it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is that I am going to... Hmm, what am I actually going to do? Oh yeah, we're going to open up the um, CSV file that I have on my Google Sheets. So I'm going to go to sheets.google.com and the reason why you can't really see it is because it does have my name on it. And you know how I am. Like, there are some times in which, you know, safety is a key thing here. And the last thing I want is Roblox to terminate me again. I mean, even though that termination was unjustified, still, you never know. So I've got a bunch of um, translations here. And I figured that I might be able to do something with these. So description here, I'm going to remove that. Delete that row. Dirty sponge, gadget. Now, I wonder what gadget means in Spanish. Like, magina? Hmm. Let me see. In Spanish. I'm just going to look at it. Artilugio. Really? I think I'm going to either stick with Mahina or that. 
Let me look in the dictionary so I can verify it. Yeah, and right now I'm reading off of Google uh, Translate. But now I'm going to like look in the dictionary and see if that's actually the word. Because I remember my Spanish teachers from my uh, former uh, middle school and I think high school, as well as like elementary, told me not to use Google Translate. I only use Google Translate if like I don't know a word, but then I would have to verify it with the dictionary. I said try to use the dictionary as much as possible or your knowledge to do so or to like translate stuff. So I'm going to go to the gadget and it's actually Artilugio. <laughs> Interesting. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm actually going to make this capitalized because it's part of the, uh, like the label is actually capitalized, the original text that is. So I've got that and I think I remember what giraffe means. I've got to look it up. So let me see if I can find it. So if I go to, I think it's in, uh, hold on, I'm trying to find it in the dictionary. Giraffe so that we can translate it. In a few minutes, you should be able to see it, or actually a few, like, maybe not minutes, but like maybe in like 10 minutes or more. You should be able to see new translations because we're going to be finishing up with these and then we're going to add on later. Because I did some stuff last time that might warrant like actually finding out what was translated. So let's see, we got getaway, we got goggles, we got going. I think it's right about, let's see, it should be giraffe. Hiraka. Which means it's spelled like this, by the way. J I R A F A. Now let me check and see if there's an accent on that, because I might have to type that with an accent. I'm trying to see if I can look through the dictionary again. Mm. Nope, no accent. It's fine. Now, another thing I have to look up is graffiti. So I'm going to look that up. Pintada? Oh, like paint. It's painted, that's right. Graffiti is always painted. And pintada probably means painting. <laughs> so let's actually look that up again. I mean, it does make sense, but it probably could be wrong. Because you know how machine translations are. They can be wrong at times. So I'm going to look in here. Graffiti. If I can find it. Graduate. It's actually just graffiti, but with like one F. So I'm going to do graffiti like that with just one F. And an item description, you don't need that. So I'm going to delete that, item name, delete that row, leafy, now what about leafy, frondosa, hmm, by the way if you guys don't see it, it's because it's in Google Sheets, because you know, I can't have people seeing my uh, personal account with that, so. That's one thing. But now I'm going to actually start to like finish it soon. So I'm trying to see if I can find the word leafy. Let's see if we can find it. Leading or letting? Okay, letting. Leader, leaf. Hmm, interesting. I don't see anything about leaf. Except for like the word hojear, which means the leaf through. And leaves are like hoja, you know, 
basic words, but I still don't see anything else. So, frondoso. Kind of different. I'm just going to say leafy. Um, or better yet, I got a better idea. Hojas. Leaves. So, what about loadout? Loadout packages. Hmm. Loadout packages. Baquetas de carga. Hmm, interesting. Loadout is your equipment. So, I think I'm going to have to go with equipment. Equipo. So, paquetas de equipo. Let me see what equipment means in Spanish. I'll find it. Loadout is actually a gaming term. So, that's why it's kind of hard to find. So I'm going to find equipment, just looking through my dictionary here. Oh wait, I think I found the page in which I'm supposed to look for it. So it will be there, equipo, and the I, okay, right, equipo, equipo. So it's back, get this. Let's find out what packages means. Or paquetes, right? So it's like this and the equipo. All right, got that. And then I know level is like nivea, nivel, like that, like that. I mean, sorry, nivel, and then one. M4. I think melee. I don't know what melee means. Pelea confusa. What? That doesn't make sense. I gotta look this up now. I know darn well it does not make sense because apparently, what is confused about melee? Nothing. So melee is tumulto. Like tumult or fight. So it'd be like tumult. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that should have been. Let me just see what it was. Okay, no accents. That would be really hard if you had to do accents. So this is the package view, so I'm going to get rid of that. That way. And then paquete nuevo. Oh wait, you gotta capitalize it. Paquete nuevo. I mean, new package. And then laser, night laser. What's laser? Like that, laser with the accent. So the laser, yeah, laser, can't really get it right now, because I don't have like a palette of words or characters that I can copy and use, so I'm going to do laser, del, or de la noche. Now noche, if you don't know what it means, it means night. So keep that in mind when you're trying to make something like this. You gotta know your words. So let me scale this down. Perfect. Now we're actually gonna get into it. Package name. Easy. Nombre. And in fact, let me see if there's any accents on it. I know what it is, it's just that. Oh wait, name. Okay, no accents. Nombre del paquete. 
So it's basically package name in Spanish, name of the package. And then we gotta look up recording, which I might have to verify, because you know how this is. What? Recuerda is what I was looking for. So let's see if there's actually a thing. I think it's probably the Recuerda. So let's see, recover, recorded. Grabado. Relation. Grabar. Oh, so it is grabar. Let me just reword that. Grabación. So I'm going to be recording like this. Grabación, grabación del paquete and saved. Salvado? Okay, like salvar, like salvage. Salvado. So basically what this means is that the recording of the package was saved or saved. Now let's see, diamond, what about diamond? I may have to verify that. Diamante. Hmm. Let's see if we can find that word. I know I'm speaking a little bit of Spanish and some of you may not know what I'm saying, but this is basically the language that I've known for 10 years. So, or maybe more, depending on like, if I've learned any words like after I stopped like going to class for it after 10 years. So diamond is actually diamante. Interesting. So it'll be like diamante del or del papel. And I think papel has an accent on it, so I'm going to find it. Nope, it doesn't. Now, primarily is... I think it's called... Let's see, primary. Primario. Or is that the right word? It's been a while since I've actually learned or actually like used that word, primary, in Spanish. So I'm going to find it. Primario Okay, got that and that I'm just using the dictionary to validate it And then pistol I think it's something I forgot what pistol even meant Pistola Is that true? Hmm Let me look at that, just to make sure. As you can see, I'm, well actually, as you can't see, but as you can hear, I'm trying to verify the words that are coming off of the machine translation in the dictionary. And if they're not right, I use the dictionary translation. I was taught that in class, if you don't know. But, um, let's see, pistol, where is it? Pistol, pistola, okay, it's verified. Alright, recon. Now what about recon? It's recon, really? Like reconnaissance. You know, like sniper reconnaissance. I'm going to have to abbreviate it in Spanish, so just keep that in mind. Recon is probably... Reconocimiento, so it makes sense. 
de conocimiento. So that makes sense. Just keep it as a recon. And this would probably be grabe. Let's see, record package. Isn't that like? Because I know this isn't right. This is a command, affirmative. I think usted, because you don't know the player at all. You don't know anyone on Roblox. I mean, unless you invited them or knew them like in person, like you wouldn't know who they are as a developer. So you have to use the usted, affirmative usted command. So let's see, record package. I think grabar, it's like you use the opposite of the AR. Um, I think it's like you use the opposite of the AR present tense conjugation. So that means you would do grabar, it would be like grabe. So record the phrase. But then how do you do that? Uh, like it's graba, but then registra is registre, apparently, because that's AR, but then you have like the E. So it's probably um, usted right there. Like, you probably may not see it, but then um, it would make sense. So what I'm probably going to do is grabe la la kete. Record the package or L paquete. The guy was L. <laughs> L. And then this would be grabando L paquete. Meaning it's recording the package. <laughs> so then red tries. I think triangle would be triangulo or something like that. Yeah, like this. Triangulo. With an accent on the A. So that would be like trying to find an accent. Let's see. Accent palette. Spanish letters. I'm just trying to find out if I can find my like, accent palette. Or just Spanish letters palette. Maybe something like that. I'm trying to find like the keyboard shortcuts. Or maybe I can use character map. I think I'm going to use character map for now. So let me find that. So I'm going to go here to my programs, find accessories. And on Windows 7, it would be I think, ease of access. Or is it system tools? Character map. That's what it is. It's character map. You go to system tools and then character map. So then I want to put in. Let's see. Alt for 0193. So it'll be like tray. Alt 0193. Oh, that's weird. Oh wait. Hmm. That's weird. What's the keystroke for it? Hmm. So I want 
gonna use a better keystroke than that. Copy. Oh, 0193. So it'll be like triangulo. Triangulos rojos. Like that. And I think red has an accent. Let me check. Nope, it doesn't. It's fine. Now I think, what is rust? Mojo. Is that true? Let me look it up. Oh, okay. I found a place to look at. Or look up the uh, word rust. So it'd be like oxido is the actual word you use, not mojo. See, that's the problem with machine translation. So it'd be like, in fact, you gotta use an O for this. We find that. Uh, I don't see the O anywhere. Let's see if we can find it. I know there's an O somewhere. Is it this? I think it is. Copy. Oxido, meaning rust, or oxide, iron oxide. Regular laser would be, and then I got a little character map. Find this. Copy. Laser. I think regular is regular, really? I don't know about that. Let me check it for a minute. I think it's something totally different. So if I look in here, I would find it's here. Oh, it's regular. Okay. Regular. Is it regular? And this would be sal de. Paquete. Salve el, I mean, salve el paquete. And then you have this scar L. Scout. I wonder what that means in Spanish. Explorar. Explorador. Isn't that what it is? Explorador. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Explorador. Or scout. You know, like explore, you scout on an area, you're exploring it. So this is secundario. And I think there's an accent in secundario. Secondary? Nope, there isn't. Let me take that and put that there. And select item would be... I think select is something else. I forgot. Selection. Selectiona. Right, like selection. So it be selectione. Selectione. L. See what is item? I think it's something like cosa. No, I'm just gonna say cosa. La cosa, meaning thing or item. 
item would be uh, Cosa. I think Cosa has an accent on it, so I'm gonna check. Let's go straight back to this part, and I'm gonna go to thing. Cosa. Okay, there's no like accent. So item. I'm going to do that. It's a synonym for thing, so that's why I associate that with that. Invasion. Invest. Item articulo. Or actually, we can just use articulo. Or maybe not. Hold on. Let me look at it again. Because there are many different words in it. Punto, asunto. So it'd be articulo. So I'm going to do. And, and then I'm going to find um, character for I. So I would be. Wow, there's a lot of word or letters here that have things that I'm not looking for. Let's see, it will be I, but it's not supposed to be lowercase. It's supposed to be uppercase. The whole thing is uppercase. So in that case, I'm just going to search for I. Like that, yeah. Capital letters. Take that out. Copy. Articulo. Like that. And articulo. And then what about shock? Shoke. Huh, interesting. Is that what the word I'm looking for? Hmm, probably, hold on, I'm looking for it, and shock should be, let's see, Tierra, shockwave, hmm, oh, it's actually shoke, like that, there are many different meanings to this, so I'm just going to paste it in. Probably gonna need someone to verify all this stuff for me. That's as 12, got that. I think shotgun is. Escopeta? Really? They put scopes on a shotgun? No, not really. I think I'm gonna have to look for the word. Shotgun, where is it? Oh, it is a scopeta. <laughs> it's kind of scoped anyway. It's like, depending on how you use it. If it's aimed, then it's most likely scoped. So then we got tries, which is triangulos. And the I, by the way, actually the A has an accent on it. that and use meaning usar or actually use use affirmative in Spanish Usa tu palabra. Okay. But then I'm looking for the uh, formal. So I'm going to actually look on somewhere. So. Oh. Ser 
is say amable, amable, be, be nice. And then you have um, pague, o pague, la cuenta, mean pay the bill. Abra, abrir. So let's see about usa. See. Trying to find out if I can find use. So I'm trying to figure out if we can do that. Uh, let's see, use affirmative. So affirmative. That'll work. Let's see. Use. Use. Okay, like use, but it's pronounced use in Spanish. So it's the same thing. Use el paquete. And then what is instead? Lugar in place, okay. And lugar. Now this might be long, so I'm probably gonna have to like put this down or something. So let's see, we've got that. Is this instead? I think it's going to be usual. Let me look up usual. I mean, usual. But let me look up instead as well, just to make sure. Let's see, instructed intake instead. En cambio, instead of something, it'll be in the. But en cambio is better. En cambio. So we gotta find the I. I think the I is right here. Select. Actually, copy that and put that there. En cambio. And window. I think it's ventanada. Ventana, okay. So let's see. Camo, ventana. And I don't know what zebra means. In fact, let me look up window again. Just window in general. Which pulses windfall window? Let's see, yeah, it's Ventana. So now we're just going to do Camo del La Ventana. <laughs> That'll be better. And zebra is the last one I want to do. Zebra. Is that really what I'm looking for? Uh, hold on. It is zebra. All right. So looks like we've got ourselves all the translations done. So I'm going to download as. CSV. Save it as this. And I'm going to close this out. Or actually, I could keep it handy. But um, right now, I don't think I'm going to do that. 
so yeah anyways I think I'm going to keep working so yeah So anyways, I think I'm going to keep working, so I'm going to like import this, if I can find it, I'm going to stop this for a minute, go to here, import, go to translations, I'll put in service storage because we're going to like re keep on redoing it. So, then the next thing I want to do is put this in Spanish. Like, if it's in service storage, it's most likely there so we can save it. So, we've got all of these, and we've actually translated a lot. Recon Explorador. And choque, which is shock. So now we've got all of these. Garabina. LMG hasn't been translated. That's because I didn't get to LMG. So I'm actually going to translate that. If I can find out where it was. So I'm going to do that. Stop this. And this is why this is in server storage. So I'm going to do text capture English. Go to shock. And here's the LMG. And basically that's the uh, whole thing. So now I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to look for the generalized localization table and I'm going to um, export it. Actually, cancel that. We're not going to export it like that. I'm going to actually have to do this save as CSV and go here to translations. Generate localization table two, or actually R one, revision one. So then we go to revision one, right? You've done all that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to. Go out to drive. I can find drive. So let me go here to Google Sheets. You don't see it, but you know. Go to drive. And I'm actually going to hold on. Uh, Let me see if I can get a token or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah. I'm going to make a new table or just upload something. Let me see if I can find out what to upload. File upload R1. And I got that. I might even make a special like extension for like doing this. So I'm gonna go to I think it was recent. Find the second generalized look. Well, actually I'm gonna make a new spreadsheet. So yeah, I'm gonna make a spreadsheet. 
So I'm going to do this. I'm going to open. We're actually going to import this spreadsheet. So yeah. I'm going to definitely import the spreadsheet so we can like do stuff with it. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my localization table. So I'm going to go to R1, select, so then replace spreadsheet, and yeah. So here we go. Got the untitled spreadsheet, and done mostly everything and while wow, I kept my uh, translations except for a few things get this the Kifo, this the Holo, Garabina keep everything? I wonder if it kept everything. So I'm going to look for that. Tumulto and tumulto. Paquete nuevo. Eso de la noche. Nombre del paquete. And... Let's see. El paquete. El paquete. Triángulos rojos. Piel rinoceronte. Rhino skin. Óxido. Laser regular. Supresor. Which is this. And there's still a lot more to go. So, I'm still trying to figure that out. Anyways, um, I think we can actually start on finding out what the LMG was. But it's kind of weird why it didn't record everything. Because it should have, you know? <laughs> so, it, it should have recorded everything. Anyways, I think, yeah, I'm just going to put this back. Let's see, uh, text capture again, play. I'm going to see if I can get it again. Because right now I'm having problems translating this. Or actually getting the uh, stuff needed to translate. So I'm going to do this. Not go to Scout, but go to Shock. And here's the M60. So we get that. And we're going to... Stop. And... Hold on, it's loading. Still loading, and I'm going to stop the text capture, save the CSV, it's R1, replace, then go back, import, upload, select the file, R1, open. You place spreadsheet or current sheet. Actually, yeah. 
just replace it all and done so we still got everything we could but I don't see anything about hmm that's weird let me try that again the R1 okay let's play spreadsheet okay and um yeah I mean that's basically what I did I don't know what happened maybe something went wrong who knows sheesh uh yeah there's a big problem with that so I'm gonna have to like fix it in some way so that I can see the data maybe I didn't like see it all so I'm gonna look for it oh so it got a lot of translations here So we got a spalda, a spalda. M60. Yeah. So I'm actually going to delete that row. Because you don't translate M60. At all. But I am going to copy this over to let me see go to the other one and I'm going to actually put this here so I'm going to insert a row if I can one row below paste LMG let's see what is light machine gun in Spanish? And machine gun? A metraladora. Ligera. So it's an AL. Let me see if that's actually true. You need a dictionary to do it. So, metradora de guerra. It means probably light machine gun. Oh, and look at this. Spanish or Spaniards actually made the Ameli. Or is that a. Hmm. So it's Ameli. Okay, Ameli. That's what it's going to be. They'll understand it. What did I just do? There we go. So I'm going to put in Ameli. That way you'll know what it is. And I'm actually going to capitalize it. Ameli. Meaning. Ametraladora ligera. Or light machine gun. And the actual Ameli that they've named. Is. Actually. Looks like the MG32. But kind of weird. It looks like the uh, MG42 actually. <laughs> Sorry, I got them mixed up. So we just put a melee and then done, I believe. Let me just check the other spreadsheet and see if I didn't miss anything. So I didn't. 
I didn't miss anything. So, yeah, I didn't miss anything. So now, I think we can probably export it, so download it as a CSV. Yep, place that. And I'm going to go in here and find the localization table. Load from CSV. This. Open. And done. Just put it in Spanish. And let's see how it works. So if I go to Shoke or Shock, it will say Ameli, meaning LMG, but it's a Mechaladora Ligera. The two um, words put together into an abbreviation. So it makes sense. Anyways, I think that's it for localization. Next time we'll get whatever is left. And as we go, we'll like do certain things, like I'll do a little bit of localization before we get to the uh, stream. And uh, that will be it to the stream. So now let's go into packages. So like, I'm trying to think. How do we do packages? Because I might want to take a break before we actually get into it. Yeah. I mean, I want to actually take a break before we get into it. So that we can do it right and stuff. Anyways, um, yeah. So, uh, let's take a break. I'll be right back when I am ready.
Okay guys, I'm taking a break and now I'm ready to actually do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this right here. I'm probably going to go to model or to rank. Probably home. Anyways, I'm going to go to the package. Actually, load up menu server. Close this out. And these. And this, because I did this earlier. And I'm actually going to have to go to menu UI, local script, right here. So then we got that. And I'm going to go to package view. And select this. Actually, not package view. New package. And this. So we've got that. And I'm going to get rid of this print statement. And then do save if save package then save package or actually local pack data equals saved package to replicated package let's see what it actually is in inventory service so if we go here, we'll see that we've got all of this stuff. So then I'm going to actually like fix this. So then we have the primary. And I'm probably going to put extra data on it too. So that you can be able to like put in the camos and stuff. And save all of that as a package. So I'm going to take this. And if this thing has a name, or if the weapon has a name, it will be an underscore. Meaning that there's going to have to be a name, and it's going to be a regular expression in which will be used to parse it. So that you can find it. So now we've done that. Almost done. And I'm going to take that. Do this. And get rid of this. So then we get that, and probably gonna like delete this. Pack that primary. Pack that secondary. And then pack that um, explosive. Same thing with this. Pack that gadget. Get rid of that. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm making it simpler than the SAA3 version, which was a prototype, so that this can work. Now we get rid of this. And done. So now I'll close this up, close this window. Close tabs. Uh, pack that description. Probably gonna get rid of that too. So now we've done all of that, and looks done to me. So here we go. We've uh, finished updating the package. Now we're going to have to go to the new package. So then we do that. And I'm sorry if that's my stomach. It's probably because of me. <laughs> Anyways, um... I'm going to work on this. Going to do pack data. Oh, wait. Here's what you got to do we got a local remote service because you're going to need this. Require game storage on remote service. And remote service dot send. In fact, I'm actually going to do this. Local result equals remote service dot send and actually fetch. Sorry, <laughs> forgot it was fetch. And we do server and then we do create package L or loadout package. And 
then we do um, we do pack data. But then we have to send this. So we're going to do pack data dot name. Now, by the way, I might actually do a data store with this, but it's going to be different. And it's also going to involve getting rid of some stuff later in the data store. So, if result, then, or actually, result equals true. When we're doing this, you might think, wait a minute. Isn't result supposed to be true? I mean, isn't it just supposed to be is result? Or if result? Well, I mean, it's already, it could be a boolean, or it could be a, um, I'm trying to think of what it was, but if it was anything, it would probably either be a one of two things. If it comes out positive, it's boolean. If it comes out negative, it's going to be a string. So that means one thing. What we have to do here is, if result equals true, else if type of result equals boolean then I mean string sorry string if it's a string then here's what you do first before we do anything we gotta make sure we have this open and that we do the follow so we do listen server and now you, there's two or one thing that you need for this package. You definitely need a primary, and you may possibly need a secondary, depending on what the package is. Because in the future, there might be like certain types of packages. You never know. So I'm going to do fetch, create, loadout, package, function, player, P name package and then we do this so what we will do is we will make a save game slot for this so I'm going to actually have to get the save game local save actually no save game containers player equals let's see because the public version won't have all these updates it was just mainly just to show you what it would do because the packages aren't functional yet I mean I might add it in as like a separate table but this is like totally different so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do save game service is required game actually yeah script parent save game service save game service and I forgot what the method was let me look so it's right here create save game container and what this does is it creates like an object you can use to like organize all the data instead of using values all the time so we have that and then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this so that you can like have the uh, you know loadouts and stuff. GRC dot packages packages equals and then you've got available we'll save game game packages. Oh yeah, load our packages. Out packages dot available. So in loadout, it's going to be really different from the SAA 3s original structure for this. So what I mean by that is the following. Up here we have the first save game. So if I put packages in here, you'll have that. And which is in here. Now, if it's a table, 
if the type is a table for the packages, not really the packages, but the uh, loadout, then you'll be fine. Actually, not fine, but if this is like a table, like the um, default loadout or default uh, setup, or whatever you call it, then that means it's going to be like everything is set without a package. But if it's a string, it's most likely a package. So I'm going to do this default uh, setup equals this. Now I'm going to actually set that later, but right now we just need to worry about what's important. So let's see, packages equals. Um, let me think for a minute. It would be self uh, packages and then default setup equals self at default setup. And then we've done with that. And I'm sorry if you hear that noise in the background. <sighs> yeah. You shouldn't be able to hear it. But anyways. Yeah, that's a big problem. Hold on. So you got packages, default setup. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the default setup from the um, save game. So game loadout at default setup. And there you have it. So now we've got that and we're going to have to add a package. So I'm probably going to do something with call instead. So I'll do function save game service dot game ready data call. And then here's what we do. We have action and we have action name and then we have the args. So then we're going to do if action equals do then else if action equals get then and then we have that set up so now that we've got everything we need set up in that context there's one more thing we need to get to that we need to do. Now, I don't know what it is at the moment, but it should be something cool. I'm trying to figure out what it is, but <laughs> just hold on for a sec. So, um, we did that. So now we've got to do, actually I know what it is, it's do. So then if action name, and I could use like a table, but that would be kind of hard. So then if action name equals um, add package. And here's the deal. We put it then there. But then we got to do this. If we're going to actually like use the loadout system like this, you know, with the packages and the defaults, we need to make sure that we're not like duplicating the names of certain packages. So it'll be this. And that's only if it's private on this on this end. But then there's going to be a special data store in which we'll use to figure out if there's any other public loadout package with the same name. That's only if you make your package public. So private packages go like this. So there's like package names equals a table. And basically what this does is that it, um, hmm, trying to think for a minute. It basically allows me to, uh, to work with this. So let's see. Default setup or there's going to be a table right there. And then you've got, um, you've got packages that are available. Oh, wait, we forgot. 
available packages. Then again, I don't think we need that. Just load out the packages. Or, actually, you don't need the or. So we've got available or just packages. And then default setup, we've got that, which is going to be an empty table for now. And then we need to do something else. So we're going to have to do. Um, or actually, let's just set this to loadout. So loadout packages, package names, equals save game, dot game, dot loadout, dot package names. And we're done with that for now, with uh, setting it up on that side. Now we just need to go to the uh, the meta method for like calling the table, and we need to do this. So then we need to do if action name equals is duplicate, or just yeah, is duplicate. Then we do this. So we do local args, or actually we can do that outside the table. Local args equals this. And then local package name or pack name equals args1. And then we do local result equals false. So then we do for package p name in pairs package names or yeah, so packages dot package names actually loadout, sorry, loadout dot package names do if p name equals pack name. Then result equals true. So basically, what that means is that it looks through the list, and if the pack name is this, then it's true. So then we do a return result, and basically, what that means is that. It's going to loop through the table, and if it finds anything there that is not supposed to be there, or actually not that, but if it finds something there in which is the same as what you put in, then it's going to like make it true, and then if the result is true, what we'll do is the following. So we go to the um, loadout menu server and we do if save game containers player okay and then we call it we do get is duplicate and then we do cp name then return and this is what we returned, by the way. It will be, um, let's see, package name must be unique. And that's basically what we return if this is a duplicate. So then we'll do if package dot primary. Or actually, we'll do if not package.primary, then return package must have primary, must have a primary weapon. And in fact, we're going to put the period on it. 
because we need to make sure that this has a way of, um, like it has better grammar. And this is also going to be translated. So um, I'm going to find out if I can do that. So then we're going to do end. And then if not, let's see, what else is there? I think that's it. So then we'll do local package equals, let's see. Oh, wait, got to go up. Here's what we do. Equals inventory service dot loadout package dot from replicated. And in fact, let's look through the script and see what we can find for that. And it's going to be from replicated loadout package. So I'll just do from replicated package because it's easier. So let's see, from replicated package. And then we'll do package. Let's see, package to process. And then here's what happens if package. And in fact, I'm going to do this success and package to process equals that or equals pcall function. And then we'll do a return inventory service to load out package from replicated package and we put in the package. And if success, then Here's what we do. We're going to do, um, and I believe the packages have to be cached in a certain way. So we're going to do this package, oh yeah, package objects equals a table. So then we'll do for this. Package in pairs name package in pairs. Okay, GRC loadout that packages do. And then we go up. We're going to add something here. So we'll go here, copy this, and then we're going to add in inventory service. So now we got to do this. Go down and then we'll do um, grc.packageobjects or loadout.packageobjects name equals inventory service dot loadout package dot from replicated package and then we'll do package. Done. And that's it. So now, this is what we do. We've got to go to the uh, menu server, and then we do package or success and whatever. And then we'll do, um, hmm. Oh yeah, save cont containers player. Okay, and then we'll do this. We're going to add an action. So if we go up, we'll do add package, then local package name, package n equals rx1, and then local package equals rx2. So then we do if package n and package then self dot loadout dot package something let me just see what we can do here so then we're gonna go to uh, loadout dot package n I believe oh no package objects Package n 
equals let's see package end equals inventory service or actually just package self that loadout that package objects or just packages equal on an n package n sorry equals package to replicated package I think that's how it goes let's just check and see so it's to replicated package as I said and now we are done with that so then this is what we do save game container in fact, I'm going to put error here. So let's see if success, then save game containers player. And then we'll call it and we'll do do add package. And then we'll do package to process dot name package. And then we package the process. So then we'll do that. And we return true. Else return to string error. And so now we did that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a new package, local script. And then we'll do. See UI pack save package dot text equals remote mm, let me think package saved and in fact I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna put print C around that upper and then app, and then if it's false, then we're going to do this UI that save package. Or actually, I'm going to do it in the text box. And save package that text error occurred. And then UI dot package name text equals result. And then wait five. Same thing up here. UI dot save package dot text equals save package. And then UI dot save package dot text equals save package. UI package name dot text equals UI package name placeholder text so then we did that and then we're going to wait five here again we do the same thing here and then we'll do this and we're going to do the same thing with this as well so we've basically done everything we could with the text for now. So let's test it. See how it works. Yada yada. And something's broken. Hmm. Interesting. Am I doing Spanish for some reason? Hold on, let me check. It's supposed to be English, not Spanish. So now I'm gonna like make that breakpoint go away and huh, interesting. Table expected got nil. 
So basically it's in pairs. So we got to look through that. In fact, package names is actually nil. Interesting. Load out the packages. So then we do. Um, and in fact, I got to reset my data. Let me do that real quick. Go to plugins. Here, data store. This one. Connect. And then we go to game. Actually, I'll go back and delete the entire thing. So then, uh, hmm. interesting. Um, it's kind of broken right now, but I'll fix it. So I'm trying to look for the um what was this inventory. Oh yeah, forgot. Gotta make that first. So I'm gonna go here instead. Take this out. And put this down here. Basically, what we've done. Oh wow, something's wrong. Oh, nothing's wrong. Sorry. So I'll just go back. And I think I'm going to record a package. Oh wow, that broke. That was too quick. So I'm actually going to add validation probably either this time or next time. For the. Um, the menu, like the uh, recording package part of it. So then I did that and that, and I'm gonna stop recording. So then I'm gonna put in the name, I'm gonna call it arrows package. Oh, this gives us just enough time to work on some kinks here. So it's two replicated package, that would be here. And that shouldn't be like that. I mean actually you do have to send it over. So pack data, pack data, etc. etc. And then we're gonna do from replicated package. And that so then we got the p name. So then it's call method. In, okay, it's line 13. Let me find line 13. Huh. Interesting. Did it return everything? I think binding service doesn't allow me to do that. So, I'm going to have to deal with it. So, let's see what we can do. I think I'm going to use G. So, I'm actually going to do... Yeah. Set. G. Current. L. Package. Equals this. And then, this is what I do. Go here. Send. Now we do get package. Was G. That current L package. So basically, it's in global variable. Just so we can make sure that we can get to it. And then that, that, yeah, I'll just record that, and that, and then I'm going to stop that, and then do arrow 
Windows package. Save. Oh wow. Explosive. Okay. Now I know what's wrong. Go here. That. That. Basically what I just did was I shortened it so that we can be able to still use it. So let's see. Hmm. What do we got? I'm gonna try salt. Go cool the package. Scarlo deal. And then we want to just call this arrows package. Save. Okay, something's wrong. Uh, yeah. So the call of field. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't see that. So it says if save games containers player. This is a table value. But I don't get where. I mean, basically, uh, hold on. Let me find it. It says here, game ready. Oh, wait. Right. <laughs> Silly me. I forgot to actually put that in there. So let's do this. So first thing I'm going to do, I'll go to salt, scar L, actually go back, I'm going to record that, and this, arrows package, save, package to process. Oh, wow. Interesting. Return. Okay, I did that. I think I want to actually change something here. Maybe put error there. So then I'll do assault again. Primary, it's like that, it's like that, it's like that. Rose package. Oh, wow, well, another problem here. So I'm going to do load out, like that. And I'm going to stop this and do this. So I'm going to do assault. Oh wait, forgot about that. That, that. And then just type in arrows package again. Save that. Package saved. So basically what we have here is a package. So now I wonder. Is it there? Hmm. How do we know? Well, we've already gotten it to a point where we can like save it and stuff. But what we don't have is a way of viewing the packages. It said package saved, by the way. If you didn't see it, it's probably because the button, I have to change that a little bit so that you can be able to see it. And all. So one thing that I've noticed about these things is that they, uh, they're kind of hard to see, you know, the meter table. Of course they would be, because they're basically like 
something that you can't parse or like put into like some kind of you know remote function or event makes total sense if you ask me why it wouldn't be there but anyways we're going to actually get to the chase here and we're going to work this out so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to hmm what am I going to do should probably work on another like loadout package thing or package view like I'm thinking about retrofiting this if you get what I'm saying but then again how would you do that without a way of being able to not only view all of the packages but you also have to have a way to apply them and maybe change them you know if you get what I'm saying what I'm saying is that this has to be a versatile system if it's not versatile what's the use so let's actually uh, start on doing something like that soon so I'm probably going to get rid of this package view thing because I don't need it. Yeah. And we're going to duplicate this soon. So slots and everything is right there. And you've got the header and stuff. So let's actually look at the GUI per se. And let's see if we can like do something with it. So I'm going to go up here. And do new package and this is what we've got so now we've got to actually like you know deal with it and stuff so I'm probably going to hmm I mean this window is right here right that holds all the weapons inside but the problem is this the weapons, they have to move with the uh, screen because I'm telling you, when you use this, this system, there's going to be a special, like, some sort of window or something where you can scroll through all these uh, packages and then you'll be able to see the attachments and stuff all on it. So then I'm like, wait a minute, what do we do? There's still a big problem here, and I've noticed that. Like, it's not as versatile as I would want it. So, that being said, I think I'm actually going to probably either take a break or maybe work on something else. Because I think localization is just about done. Or it could go on hiatus, like for just a few weeks or days until I figured out what's next to actually put in here that can be localized. So yeah. Hmm. Anyways, um, I think, I mean, I don't know what to do next, honestly. So if you guys have any ideas on what I could add to this so that we can like you know make the content diverse and stuff and not just make it diverse but make it functional tell me in the chat and I'll be happy to look into it so yeah anyways guys I will be right back once I figured something out so stay tuned for that
So, decision has been made. In this case, I'm thinking packages. Eh, maybe I can work on those next time. But, as far as localization goes, that's another story too. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Except for maybe work on weapon stats. So now we're going to work on weapon stats and that's my decision. So let's do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the weapon stats page. And it's not in the layouts. Let me uh, make it visible. And this is what it's like. Right now it's boring, it's black. It's just not what you would expect from a weapons stats window or whatever you would use to find out the stats of a weapon. So now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to make the background transparency this or one. And if I'm not mistaken, we might actually get into more localization. Doesn't mean we'll actually get into it though. I don't honestly know. So let's see what we can do, and it'll show if we there's anything else we can do. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find gun appearance, and I'm going to find the weapon image, and I'm going to put it in here. So basically, the weapons image is right there. You should be able to see it, obviously, but then again, maybe not. So I'm thinking this. Instead of having a size of the full window, we're going to actually have a size of 3. 0 0.30, or actually 0 0.50, and then 0 0.50. Makes it look like a rectangle, but also a square at the same time. <laughs> So then we're going to do 0 0.250, or actually 0 0.1, and then 0 0.250. Probably going to make this shorter, so I'm going to do 0 0.4, and there you have it. That's your weapon image. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a really important and special frame. This is the frame where every single stat will be displayed. So I'm going to call this stats card. Size will be 0 0.9, actually not 9, 0 0.30, 0 0.90. And then get rid of the border size pixel, make this like maybe a, not that kind of blue. Maybe a greenish color on this side. Yeah, that'll work. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the stats card and I'm going to move it over here. But in order to do that, this is what we do. We're going to do 0 0.6, or actually 0 0.7, negative 10. And then 0 0.05 and that. So then, in fact, I'm going to actually do something with this. I'm going to make it 0 0.4 just for like security purposes. Well, not really security purposes, but you know, as a safety blanket. Just in case there's something really long. So, yeah. And there you go. You have your uh, window set up, but sorry about that, guys. That's my mom. Anyways, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hmm. What's next? That's what I wonder. What's next? Well, the next thing I'm going to actually do is this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here the name of the weapon. 
So text label make it one zero zero point zero five zero. Make the border size pixel zero, transparency one. And I'm probably going to use either a different font or the same one. Probably going to do semi bold with a white background. Call this gun name. Text scale. And probably going to add in a frame. I actually make this like 0 0.03. No wait, zero four is actually better. So basically we did that and next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a frame. I can do it. Come on. Insert object frame. And I'm going to do this. I'm gonna make the size one zero one zero. Or actually make the zero point zero five. Get rid of the border size pixel and then put it at one. And eh, I think that's smaller, maybe like 0 0.8. And then put that in the middle at 0 0.1. So there you go. Gun name. Now if you're wondering, there should be a rank under there, but I'm probably not gonna do that. So I'm gonna do a gun name and then the next thing I'll put in is uh, hmm I'm trying to think of what's next because I know there's a lot of stats but there's one thing that is missing and I believe that is hmm I'm trying to think of what that is. Because I know I want to add a graph to this, like a little bit like PF, but in a different way. You know? So let me find one on the depth form. Maybe I'll find something that I could actually use and, you know, tweak a bit so that we can, like, make this work. So then I'll probably do graph. or type in graph for the search. And I think I'm going to take a break right now because I have to find it. And I'll be right back when I do.
Alright guys, I couldn't really find one, so... Yeah, big problem. Anyways, I think... Yeah. I mean, it is a big problem if you ask me. There's not many graphing utilities on Roblox. I mean, I could possibly make one, but it would take some time to get the frames right. So if you know anybody that knows how to make that kind of thing, just tell me and I will actually, like, look at what, like, not really look at, but, you know, you know, like, you know, learn their teachings or whatever they call it. Anyways, um, what else can we do besides that? Because that is just, ugh, not really good. So, um, hmm. I don't think it's a good idea either to make a graph. I mean, we could, but is it really worth it? Probably not. So in that case, let's just, you know, work on just the uh, text parts of these. So I'm going to actually add in on the stats card a frame. Uh, yes, another frame. This time it's transparent. So I'm going to call this frame stat. Or as we should call it, um, readables. Make the size 10 zero, zero point, I think seven zero. Anyways, make the border size pixel 1, make it transparent, drag it down to 0 0.3, and then up it by 5, or negative 5, and there you have it. But I'm also going to have to take this, those stats and put it in another frame, because I forgot, we need a scrolling frame for this. So I'm going to take that, put that in there. Take this, put this in there, then make this uh, thing transparent, four size pixels one, then I'll call this readables, like the other one, and probably going to keep it like that, yeah. Anyways, take this one out, and then here's what we do next. We're going to go to items, find this, copy that, put that in here. Oh yeah, scrolling enable. And that, then make this like four. And there we go. So then we're going to do the scroll bar position, and I'm going to just do scroll bar. Or is that good as an inset? Probably not. Yeah, none. I wonder how that works. Let's just see how it works. And it doesn't. Anyways, uh, yeah. Probably going to do none for that. And done with the readable setting it up now we just got to work on the rest of this so in that case we'll get started now on doing the following so if we wanted to make a readable here's what I would do first before we do anything I'm going to insert a list layout so this is a UI list layout it's going to be vertical, left, sort order, layout order, vertical alignment top, and done. Oh, and by the way, make the padding 10. And that's good. So now we're going to insert a frame. And I want to get to that frame in a minute. Yeah, okay. Call this frame 
uh, I think I'm going to call it as a template readable. And the readable will have a different name when a stat is associated with it, such as RPMs and um, damage. And then the size will be 0, actually 1, 0. Yeah, 1, 0. Actually, like 1, negative 4. And then we'll do 0 0.10. Then I'll turn this down to 0 0.025. There we go. Gives us enough space to put in some stats. Four size pixels 0. Transparency is 1. Hold on, guys, I gotta drink some water. And then, after we've done that, we're going to I think, clip the sentence? Probably not. Not a good time for that. Anyways, I'm going to put in an example stat by putting in a text label and then doing call this stat name or title, whatever. And then I'm going to do highway for this. I'm going to call it stat. Probably make this um. 0 0.250, actually 240, 5, no, 8, 0.250, and then make the board size pixel 0, makes this transparent, make that transparent, text color should be white, and then probably text scaled. No, not text scaled. Maybe make it like 24 or 20. Probably not even 20. But then again, I got a better idea. Make this 0 0.4 and put it on the left. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably do like 16 font. I guess. Maybe that. And then the next thing I'll do is that I will put the um, hmm. okay, I think I got it now. So everything's on point except for the texture of transparency, which I'm going to make like this. Or maybe not. Anyways, duplicate this. Call this um, just say value and call it stat value. Make it much bigger, like 0 0.6, and then we'll do 0 0.4. And if the stat goes over, like all the way over here, then I'm going to put this to center so that you can see it better. Maybe like out of the center or right, probably right. Anyways, it's on the right, and the next thing we'll do is we will, I think that's it. So now we've got that, we can like copy the readable and put it in deployment UIs. So then I want to add some stats to this. So what would I do? Well, here's what we're going to do. In this case, what I'm going to do is I am going to add in something to the script. Probably going to delete this first. And then we're going to do local, like script parent, local stat card equals UI.stats card, local readables, readable list equals QI.readables. Actually, not that. Stat card. Readables. Okay, so now what we do next is this local function add readable. 
name value. So let's say local readable equals game dot replicate storage dot deployment UIs dot readable clone. And then readable dot name equals, and this is what we gotta do. We gotta make sure there's a title to it. Equals name. And then readable dot text equals title. Readable dot uh yeah, not readable dot text. But readable dot stat name dot text equals title. Readable dot stat value dot text equals value. And then readable dot parent equals readables or readable list. So now we got that, and there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to do this, readable, return readable. So then what we're going to do is local readable equals a table, and then local uh, Pre tab stats equals this. So now we're going to make this table. So then everything is going to be a function. So in that case, I'm going to do value. And then we're going to do weapon UI weapon value. So the next thing you would want to do, and I'm probably going to have this happen, is we're going to actually have to go to the um, stats window. Actually, not the stats window, but mainly the. Uh, hmm, I'm trying to figure out the word for it. Oh, right, right. We're going to have to go to the uh, gun appearance. So, or actually, not gun appearance, but deployment container. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if I can, hmm, because I know this is supposed to be where if you type in stat, it will go there. So here's what I'm going to do. Table dot insert class connections class dot name slot name weapon dot use button dot input begin and the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be putting some inputs in it that will take you directly to the stats Let's see here, what do we got? So we've got stats, function, input, if input, dot user, input type, equals enum, dot user, input type, dot, let's just say, actually type, sorry, type dot hmm keyboard then if input dot key code equals enum dot key code dot what try to think of what key to put on my keyboard let's just say s If it's S, then this is what you do. 
we're going to do I think I have to find out which one it is so let's see here what we got um yeah so basically we got the button here and we've got to that's weird Hold on, guys. I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, so then we'll do script or deployment UI parent dot weapon stats dot weapon dot value equals weapon. Actually, yeah, weapon item. And then we'll do the following. We'll do like deployment UI dot parent dot view controller jump to deployment UI dot parent dot weapon stats. And that's what we've done. So now, in that case, here's what we're going to do. We are going to probably copy this. Yes, we have to copy it and put it here. Same thing with this. We're going to copy it and we're going to place it back up there so we can use it. And let's try it and see what happens. So we go here, and um, hmm. let's just see what comes up. So we've, uh, oh yeah, we've got nothing yet. Hold on, I gotta put this back. So now I'm gonna put this back in here, and I'm going to. Probably uh, do that, and I'm going to press S. That means you have to do it on the button while it's hovered. So you put your mouse on that, and you press S. Yeah, you do that. You press S. So now I'm wondering, hmm, well, isn't there supposed to be some kind of cursor or something? For gamepad? We'll worry about gamepad later. But anyways, this is what we got. So now we go to the menu UI, we put in this, we go here, and we do weapon name. Oh yeah, weapon name is actually not supposed to be there. So we're going to do insert, or actually not even insert, we're going to do Weapon, no, UI dot weapon dot changed. Connect function weapon. If weapon, then else, and then we do. Okay, so then we're gonna do this. We're gonna do. Um, UI dot stats card, or actually just stat card dot weapon dot name, or actually that text. It's actually going to be gun name, sorry. Dot text equals weapon dot name. Or else this comes nil. So that will be like that. And then we've got that. So then we just do that's actually supposed to be something different. So I'm going to try this again. This time it's going to be a little bit better. 
So I'll go here. And do S. This is M4. Huh. Interesting. So that's really interesting. The weapon changed, but not that. So the input began. Is what we gotta do. But we also gotta do something else. So that means we've got to, hmm, try to think about what button it should focus on. So in that case, I will probably, in fact, let me go to the wiki and I'll be right back when I have the answer. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, I think I'm going to have to like, probably not, 
um, do the input like that. I mean, I could, but then again, it's just not optimal. So, uh, hmm. I'm probably going to end the stream here because apparently I'm out of ideas. And next time, this is what we'll do next time. Next time, I am going to be working on improving two things. One, improving the, um, what you call that? The way left click works on the select item button. So basically, it will open up a menu in which will actually like, like this is what it does. It opens up a menu in which will give you actions such as being able to customize the appearance of your weapon, being able to, um, you know, look at the stats of the weapon, etc., etc. And then also, Another thing that we'll be able to do later on is work on gamepad. Next time we will also work on localization and by the next time I should have an explosive gadget and melee weapon for you know the uh, package thing to use to where it will be saved and stuff. So with that being said my name is Eridos12 and I'm actually gonna have to see you next time. Cheers.